Okay, so first of all, before we start, we first have to explain our project and the two models that we decided to go with. So in so there were some hints in the title screen, but basically our project is creating an accurate model for how the price of automobiles are connected to the horsepower and other attributes of these automobiles. So for the two models, we started with the baseline linear regression model, but then over, but then later moved to try to improve it with the deep neural network model uh, for loss and validation lost. For the linear regression model, we have the bottom left picture for the formula. And for the deep neural network, we have the input layer, the hidden layers, and the output layer uh, for the formulas there. So model roadmap. There are four parts to this model roadmap. Uh, so the first part is the data processing. So we first got our data and processed it into multiple columns. We noticed that there were a lot of string attributes. So what we did was we uh, converted them into numbers that was going to easily visualize for graphing the data later on, or we entirely dropped them. And then we normalized the data and started testing four different kinds of models. That will be explained in our performance slide. The second uh, part of this roadmap is just model. So we started with the basic linear regression model, like I've already mentioned. And after finishing the model, we started experimenting going to using multiple variables and switched to the deep neural network model. Our final model was the deep neural network model. It improved our ac overall accuracy by $1,350. The third part of this roadmap is the evalu evaluation. After testing these models three different times, we summed the MSC averages and compared them between each other. Uh, and like I've already mentioned, uh, the best model based on the mean squared error was the deep neural network with multiple variables. And finally, was the, just the final test row part of the roadmap. And the final best performance I've already mentioned is the DNN network with multiple variables. But the actual summed MSC that we got from the test was $2,098, a decrease of $1,350 from our linear regression model with one variable. It was a 40% decrease um, in MSC, which was a big, was, it was a success. So then I will talk about our model settings. So as, our, as, our, um, as we gain our data, we start by using horsepower as our independent variable, so the input X, and price as our dependent variable, or which is our output or our prediction, um, which is Y. So the regression problems are actually based on the quantitative relationship between X and Y. So actually, um, the quantitative relationship of X and Y is shown in this picture, um, the dots and scattered plots for um, both price and horsepower. So the closer the model can predict Y based on X, um, the better it is. So we trained four models, as aforementioned, to um, get closer um, predictions on Y um, based on X. So as we first train our um, linear regression model, we saw that if an, the number of epoch um, times learning rate is too low, then the machine would hardly learn anything, um, which is shown on the picture um, on the right um, top side, which is a line kind of created on the bottom of the page. And then um, having no patterns or um, kind of, um, or no similarities to the, to the data um, in the picture. But if the value is too high, then the model um, would overfit. So as we do trial and errors, um, when, when the epoch number and times learning rate is too high, um, the validation loss um, decreases in the kind of previous or the first um, few epochs, and then increases rapidly in, in the later epochs. So um, we decided that um, that's kind of an overfeeding. So um, after all of that, we set the learning rate to 15 because we were dealing with high prices like 10,000 or um, 20,000 or even higher um, to get without um, around um, less than 300 um, MSC. So uh, the next part was our visualization of our data. And then the first graph is our um, like printed graph visualization of the whole repository that we found. So the repository we used, like aforementioned, is um, the automobile um, repository, um, big like machine learning um, on the on the UCI. So it has um, recorded um, different kinds of autom automobiles, and then um, also recorded a lot of each attributes like the um, uh, length, width, and also kind of a 
um, the horsepower and also the highest RPM and also the price of the car. Um, that's all, that's the kind of the data set that we use. And then from the data set, we choose four like um, numbers that were obvious, like for, for automobile, um, that is price, peak RPM, um, horsepower, and also um, the engine size. And then as we found out that um, two of the um, data is that have a um, kind of similar to linear linear relationship is um, price and engine size and also price um, and horsepower. So according to that, um, we did a um, we tried our project um, with four different models on the relationship between price and horsepower. So on the left, it was our um, history of training. So as it shows that when when the epoch um, increases, like the number of time we train it, the error, um, both the loss and the validation loss um, came to decrease as we tuned our kind of um, parameters of the training um, to the best, to the optimization. Um, so here's just a, a graph for a uh, table for performance. Um, we tested four different models, linear regression with one and multiple variables and deep neural network with one and multiple variables. Um, we tested the result of each model three times, so 12 in total, and we got their averages. So this is the means absolute error for each one. Um, so for the first model, you actually one variable, we got an, M an MAE of 3,259. For the second one, we got an MAE of 2,437. Uh, for, for the third one, we got an MAE of 3,493. And for the best one, which was deep neural, ne deep neural networks with multiple variables, we got an average MAE of 2,223. Uh, for conclusion, uh, the best model, which was deep neural network with MAE, um, got an MAE of 2,223 on average um, when predicting the price of a car. Uh, and that was $1,036 more than the MAE of the baseline model, which was a linear model regression with one variable. Uh, based on the experiment, we have learned that as the cost of a car increases, the relationship between the price and the horsepower becomes smaller. And other factors uh, such as width, style, uh, the different types of the different type, types of wheels, uh, they also factor in by predicting the price of a car as the price becomes higher. We have also we have also learned that the bigger the numbers being predicted are, the higher the learning rate and or epoch should be for the model. Uh, that's it. Cool, awesome, thank you.